is all the prisoners from the Israeli detention centers. The calls for compromise, a far cry from this warning that sends shockwaves around the world. Hamad saying the Hamas terror attack on October 7th was just the first, and that there will be a second, third, and fourth attack on Israel. But how can you ask for a ceasefire? How can you ask for Israel to stop their aggression when you go on television in Lebanon here last week and say that you will continue your aggression? You will continue you to launch October 7th yes, yes. again and again. What do you want us to do? To stop? If you're asking for to a stop? ceasefire, if okay, you're asking yeah. for a ceasefire, okay, it has okay. to be two no, ways. No, I am talking that we want to continue against the occupation. This is our national, our, our, our legal right to fight against the occupation. It is according to international law, according to all the regulations in the world. It is, in Europe, you fight against the Nazis. But then what happened on October 7th when there were clearly civilians who were killed? How would that make you a good partner to a peace negotiation with Israel? I don't, I don't have uh, any d details about this. But the details of the shocking and horrific attack carried out by what the... You tear your own civilization down from the inside if you tear yourselves apart. Eventually a challenger will come along. It's often occurred to me that um, you don't necessarily perceive threats while they're going on. Because, you know, you get up, you have your, you make your egg, you have your cup of coffee, you say hello to your, to your friends. Everything seems to be going along uh, in a... Uh, you tear your own civilization down from the inside if you tear yourselves apart. Eventually a challenger will come along. It's often occurred to me that um, you don't necessarily perceive threats while they're going on. 
because you know you get up, you have your, you make your egg, you have your cup of coffee, you say hello to your, to your friends. Everything seems to be going along uh, in a, uh, as it always has done, except at a certain point it all falls apart. The West is absolutely an under threat. It is under threat from ideas and from other nations, and that those other nations are operating under the effect of bad ideas. So it is a war of ideas, and if we don't sort out a war of ideas, we're going to have a lot more actual wars. The West is under attack. We live in the freest, healthiest, and wealthiest societies in human history. Yet as authoritarian and oppressive regimes threaten us from without, a new movement within tells us to feel nothing but shame for who we are. What is at stake if the West really fully disassociates from its own core and, and um, fails to remember and understand itself and to, to treasure those precious things um, that we've inherited? I think a light will go out in the world, a light will go out in human history. And there's no guarantee that, that that light, once extinguished, will ever, um, will ever be relit. If we don't acknowledge our existence as a tradition, uh, we're in no position either to continue it, uh, to defend it when it needs defending, or to reform it in a proper way when reform is truly indicated. Unless we come to understand who we are and where we've come from, we can't go forward in an intelligent way. But as long as we have a sense of self-confidence, the willingness to stand up for our values, the willingness to fight for what we believe in, we can prevail. But weakness, self-loathing, hatred for, uh, for the, to the past, uh, and any sign of, of giving in to the enemies of freedom will result in victory for our enemies. So we must never allow that to happen. We have to prevail. We have to win. Welcome to the West. This is my take on the great, but still unfolding, adventure of who we are and why it matters. This is a history of how our extraordinary, unconventional civilization came to be and why it must be defended. It's a fascinating and often unexpected journey, stretching back 15 centuries to the fall of Rome. And one of the difficulties about Western civilization is because, just as I've said, it's a kind of, it's so complex. It's an ecosystem, and there's not just one word which defines it, like communism or fascism. It is, a, it is really complex. And so there's not one word, I mean, the best, I suppose, is the open society, or maybe the free society. But it hasn't got a proper ideology, it's emerged, and it's incredibly valuable. The first Westerners were primitive barbarian tribes. In time, Christianity and the power of law produced an open and innovative culture like nowhere else. 